at the base of your spine for your sourcing and urgings. You received the Wheel of Fortune. What an excellent card. You hit the jackpot. The winds of fate and fortune are blowing your way. Life is on an upswing. You're feeling good about it. Somewhere in the middle of this, there's some kind of karmic justice going on because it was your turn for good things to happen. The base of your spine is about the accumulation of past lives and memories from childhood up to today. But it appears you called a lot of negative things in your life. You threw them out. You did some spring cleaning spiritually and emotionally, and you're feeling really good about life. And the clarification card is the Eight of Swords. When I first saw this card, I thought of a labyrinth and King Minos and Crete and the Minotaur, but I'm feeling like you walked a labyrinth, but it was more from an event to an event. And many times while these events were happening, they were ones that were out of your control. And it made you feel really restrained because you were more of a spectator in your life than a participant. But somewhere in the middle of this, with the Wheel of Fortune, you took back control of your life. And you're feeling really positive about it because there is positive change. Changes have come and are still coming. Here in your pelvic or sacrum for your awakening or arousing, you receive the High Priestess. This is the natural home for the High Priestess spiritual awakening category. It's a very comfortable place for her to be and for you to be with her. You've been listening to her illuminative messages. Illumination in Latin means spiritual enlightenment, and you are being spiritually enlightened. And I can't say that some of you are progressing in leaps and bounds, but I'm feeling more like it's the flow of a river. It's just a natural progression of what is happening here. These new messages are very intuitive. You know, they come through dreams and premonitions and even coincidences where you walk away thinking, what happened there? Boy, that had a lot more meaning than I, than it really looked like, you know, and you started thinking about it and even sometimes you connect it to your dreams. I do anyway. So here it is. You've got luck on your side and, and just this expansive spiritual awakening. And here the clarification card is the Ace of Wands. You're sowing seeds. There's new beginnings, but I'm feeling like it's just a continuation of this spiritual progression, this new beginning is. You're just picking up somewhere new again. And you're feeling really good about it. Who couldn't with the high priest, with all of the notice as well as you've got the Wheel of Fortune, the high priest is and the sun, all major arcana cards on your unconscious inner self. You've done a lot of personal inner work here, and you're being the mechanic of the unconscious self. Here in your solar plexus, the knowing, the gut feeling, you receive the sun. What an excellent card. I mean, it's, it's like a new day dawning. Ah! You know, what sweet mystery of life before thee. It's offering clarity and understanding and fulfillment. You've walked from the obscured path of the moon out into the sunlight. And it's bringing balance of your unconscious inner self to your conscious for self. It's bringing abundance, success, and joy. What an excellent unconscious side of the, the spread here. And here you have the two of wands for the clarification. It's a it's a vision. You you the two is for decision, 
and partnership. And you're still in a decision stage. You're, you're giving new beginnings or a continuation from your spiritual awakening of new beginnings. And now you're making a vision. It's coming to the surface, to the subconscious, and you, the vision is bringing something to a reality. And choices are to be made and plans as well. But you have the courage now to, to explore. And perhaps this is going to be some kind of joint venture, I don't know. But opportunities are knocking and the door is swinging open. Now well, here at the heart, heart of the matter or the situation is the Queen of Cups, the nurturing mother. She's also about intuition, and so is the High Priestess. This is the the minor arcana card that's the counterpart to the High Priestess. So you are looking into your inner self through your intuition. One of the warnings about the Queen of Cups, though, is that she is a good, excellent mentor, and um, she gives out good advice, but a lot of times she can't live her own advice. And that's something to keep in mind, that you want to be able to continue progressing on more of the conscious level rather than the unconscious. The clarification card is the death card. You're transforming. But this is part of the flow of the river I, I pointed out because when you see the death card, you are transforming, but regardless of whatever you do, you can kick and stream. It's not going to change it. You are going to transform regardless. And if you hold back and resist change, it'll even make it worse for you. But I have a feeling that you want to change and you want to continue changing because a lot of good things are happening right now. Down in, here in your throat and what I call communicating and teachings, so seven of swords. There's a little kink in the graph here, you know, and all things are not good over the kingdom. There's some kind of sneaky stuff going on. There's some kind of, um, let's say, secrets or deception. But it might not just be people around you or somebody around you. It could be you yourself that's fooling yourself or you had been up to a certain point that everything was okay. But I think now there is some new beginnings. Let's see what the clarification. Oh my goodness, you received the Ace of Cups. Wow. You know, emotionally you are progressing. This is a new beginning, emotional new beginning. It, it's a divine cup of blessings. It's giving you the green light that you're now sowing some seeds for love, for or maybe even just emotional well-being. Here in your third eye, in seeing and envisioning, is the star, another major arcana card. It's a beacon of light to bring you into hope and healing. It's, a, it's like a ship bringing you into a, a safe harbor and a secure mooring. I also think of it too as guides. The beacon is really maybe a guide of some sort or a deceased person or an angel helping you along. And maybe you are envisioning that. And the clarification card is the Eight of Wands. Sudden change. So some things have happened suddenly. And there's going to be some other sudden changes coming up from what I feel too. But they're not going to be negative ones. Here at the crown is your understanding and knowing. You have the Four of Pentacles. I always look at this as kind of a hanger on card. You're just hanging on to something rather than a miser card. But here, I have a feeling it's really good that you're hanging on to the good things and letting the bad things go. And the clarification card, it's the King of Cups. 
You graduated from the queen to the king. You have, you're now able to balance your emotions and intellect. You're the mature king. Person now that's under control of both mind and body. Let's see here. Your past card, the Page of Cups. How interesting. You progressed from the Page of Cups to the Queen of Cups to the King of Cups. So in the past, it appears you were kind of wearing rose-colored glasses and you were more into fantasy land than into reality. You had a really immature outlook on some of your emotions and, and some of the love intrigues that you've dealt with. But he's also about, you know, a sixth sense and sensing things. But it was more of a fantasy land type thing. He's also about messages, too. And perhaps this has to do with the messages that you intuitively been receiving from the high priestess and the queen of cups. It's kind of interesting about that. Here in um, the future... You received the judgment card. That's interesting. There's a lot of aspects to the judgment card. It can be, you can be accountable for your, your past actions. It's more like you reap what you sow kind of thing. I always think of the death rituals that the Egyptians did for your afterlife. Your past behavior was put on a scale against a feather. And you can see how tenuous that is. Even just a breath of air could could change your where the destiny of your afterlife would be from from the good or bad that you did in life. But here also, it's about rebirth and reincarnation of some sort. But you can't evolve into that unless you start forgiving yourself and forgiving others for what happened. I don't know if a lot of people understand the word grace, but it's unconditional forgiveness, which comes with unconditional love. Maybe somebody here with the Seven of Swords had hurt you, but you found unconditional love to overcome that. Maybe it was just yourself that you were fooling. But here are the judgment cards making things. It's a finality. The Elfin, the end where you now you have all of this energy of new beginnings coming in, which is so excellent. And the bottom of the deck card for the overall energy of the reading or the potential outcome, the Knight of Swords. My goodness, I can't seem to get that. There we go. Pages bring ideas. The Knights set them into motion. With it being... Swords, it could be air and communication and words. Whatever it is, you're taking control, and the Knight of Swords moves very fast. He gallops through and leaves a lot of people in the dust. So things have been going quickly, and I, I see that here with the Eight of Wands as well. But there's been a lot of positive changes in your life. Here's the Doreen Virtue Angel card. You received Archangel Gabriel. You have an important life purpose, purpose involving communication and the arts. Please don't allow insecurities to hold you back. I will help you. You don't have a lot of swords, but I did indicate that this might be a communication connection. So perhaps that's there, but there's so many good things going on. One thing I'd like to point out, too, is that the angel Gabriel is associated to the judgment card. So this could have something to do with your future. And it's the Knight of Swords. Pages bring ideas and knights set them into motion. And this particular knight is impetuous. He gallops along at full speed, but then again, he makes hasty decisions. And he has a tendency of being dysfunctional. Many of the swords cards are dysfunctional. His intensity can give off a smoldering smoke that 
that blinds you. And sometimes only his horse knows the destination. So make sure you thoroughly think through everything before acting. However, in this particular instance, it seems like his methods of fearlessness and hostility are, are more staged than anything. He's prodding his audiences along by skilled orations. He's persuading people with words. This could be someone or who has or will be racing through your life and probably leaving you in the dust. Now the clarification card is the Wheel of Fortune. For some reason, this type of impetuousness and pretentiousness has worked very well for him. The fates of fortune are, is on your side. The, the wheel is going in, on the upswing. And you're feeling good about things. But then again, here in the center card for what can or can be or is yours, it's the Eight of Cups. You're moving away from something and maybe now you being the type of Knight of Swords and the impetuousness is no longer needed. And you want to move on. And you are in the clarification card for the, the Six of Pentacles. This is more about charity and well-being of other people. And Maybe you're kind of tired of the selfishness of the Knight of Swords and the fast action involved. And maybe you want to slow down and start teaching people and helping others, giving gifts and sacrificing for them so others can enjoy them. Maybe even you're thinking a little bit about your afterlife and, and how you're going to be accountable for your past behavior. Maybe it's time to slow down a little bit. And the old cliche about smelling the flowers. But personally, I'd rather act like God exists in my life than to find out when you're trying to get through the, the gates of St. Peter that, well, well, sorry, he didn't exist. But it is good to help other people, and it brings a sense of order and charity in your life. And feeling like you're doing God's work for other people. And certainly the Knight of Swords didn't do that. Now up in yourself and self-awareness, you receive the Emperor. He's about controlling his empire. But it's not only that, he organizes it and regulates it by laws and kind of ticks along like a well honed clock. And all of a sudden, from... The rather immature knight of swords, now you're the emperor, the man in control or the person in control. And with the clarification guard underneath it, the eight of wands, it's it's going to be something sudden that happens that changes your life. Maybe when you walked away from something with the eight of cups and started a more charitable, peaceful life with the six of pentacles, that you made some realizations. All of a sudden... The fog cleared and you hit a tipping point to change your life and to start controlling it. Instead of speeding along like the Knight of Swords, you're slowing down and saying, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on here? Where do I want to go in my life? What is the purpose of my life? What will make me happy? And the future card is the Seven of Pentacles. I call this almost a harvest card, and I've seen this card over and over again in recent readings. You're to the point where a crop is almost ripe, and the harvest is going to be coming soon, but you're in this very tenuous and precarious time that if you don't attend to details like the, the emperor does, and he doesn't use emotions while he's making his decisions and he looks at all the details and makes sure all the ducks are in a row. This is what the Seven of Pentacles is saying is that right now you have to look at the details. Make sure everything's correct so there's no mistakes. So you can actually have abundance. 
and be rewarded for your fruits, your labor. And I wish you acceptance, peace, and happiness.